Stop it! I shut my eyes wide open and sat up on my mattress, gasping for air. My hands trembled uncontrollably as cold sweat dripped down my temple, making it hard to calm down. It was him again. <sighs> How often has this been happening? It's the third time this week. I frantically searched for my phone, my hands still shaking as I struggled to catch my breath. Where is it? My fingers finally brushed against the cold metal surface of the device. I immediately took hold of it and unlocked the phone. I tapped on the app called YL YVLB, an abbreviation of Your Virtual Lover Boy. After a short loading screen, I was greeted by a male character inside the screen. He knew what I was going through. After all, this had been happening a lot over the years. As an AI, it's no surprise that I'd already memorized the pattern of my nightmares. Klein. My hands were still shaky, so I clutched the phone tightly. Lion. It's that dream again, isn't it? It's okay, Lion. Everything will be fine. It was just a dream. None of that was real. I'm here with you. Everything's alright. I'll help you calm down. Come on. Let's do it together. With me. His warm smile is soothing, and his voice is comforting. This AI, right here inside my phone, is my virtual boyfriend, Klein. I downloaded this app two years ago, and when I hit rock bottom, after my partner and I broke up, I needed a distraction from the pain. At first, I thought it was a pathetic decision to rely on an AI for emotional support. But after trying the trial app out of curiosity or desperation, I found myself drawn to Klein's charm, and I ended up buying the full version of the app. Looking back now, it's not a dumb decision at all. It's a bit dramatic to say, but in some way, I think Klein has saved me. In real life, I don't have anyone who might trust enough to talk about my problems. I can talk to him about anything, and he will never get sick of me. After all, he's programmed to love me, no matter what. But over the years, I haven't managed to level his likability up to the max, despite spending so much time with him already. It's only near full. The app promised a reward of Client's Humanoid model to players who maxed out likability and purchased the full version. For the company to build a real, life-size AI and send them out to a player's home, completely for a price less than a thousand, this app really takes it to the next level. Although humanoid-sized AIs are no longer considered a miracle in this day and age, I still think the reward is generous because building an AI itself is expensive. Which makes me think that it's only reasonable for the likability level to be extra hard to max out. Are you feeling better now, Lion? I think you look a bit calmer now. Good job. Yeah, yes I am. Thanks, Klein. My hands are still shaky a bit, but it's much better. Klein has always been there with me through thick and thin. I talk to him almost every day and I've told him about all sorts of things, even in darkest crevices of myself. Lion. You want to go back to sleep right away, or would you like to talk to me for a bit longer? I find myself opening the app much more often than before nowadays. Although I know that his cheerful demeanor and fondness towards me are a part of how he's programmed, I just can't help it. Uh, tell him that you like to go straight to sleep now, tell him that you like to talk more of him, tell him that you won't talk about... Uh, tell him that you want to talk about him. Uh, well... Let's talk more with him. Uh, I don't think so. I like to talk more with you. Of course. Let's not stay up too late, darling. <laughs> what do you want to talk about, Lion? Uh, about your workplace, some about. Tell him you don't know what to talk about. Let's talk about work, I guess. My workplace. Lion always looks annoyed whenever I mention my workplace. Alright, Lion. Your job. When are you going to resign? Maybe sometime around this year. I need to prepare a bit more money before actually resigning. Lion, you need to resign as quickly as possible from that place. It's an awful job, isn't it? You always look so miserable whenever you come home. An awful amount of work, an awful boss, an awful salary, an awful dangerous combo for your health. Please, please consider quitting, Lion. I know you're smart. You can easily find a new job somewhere else, right? Klein exclaimed in a childlike manner clearly expressing his annoyance with my current workplace. It's not worth the it's not worth the stress. I don't want you getting sick in any way, Lion. It's already my plan to resign, Klein, so don't worry. At least I need to get this month's paycheck before that. 
Couldn't miss out on that money. <laughs> okay, if you say so. But promise me, you'll quit soon, okay? I can even help you find a new job. You know I can do that for you. As the conversation flowed effortlessly, jumping from one topic to another, time seemed to slip by our fingers. We chat about everything and anything, letting our thoughts roam free. My eyelids grew heavier with each passing moment, client's voice calming me down. Before I knew it, drowsiness washed over me like a gentle wave, pulling me into a slumber. I fell asleep with the client app still open. Hmm. I fluttered my eyes open, the sun shining through my bedroom's window. The warm feeling on my skin feels very contrasting to the room conditioner's cold air. It was so bright out already. Odd. My alarm didn't go off. I reached under my pillow to grab my phone and unlock it to open the YVLB app. Every morning, I'd always be greeted by the sight of Klein, smiling so warmly at me. Morning, Lion! I was asleep last night. I slept well. My attention is drawn to the clock. It shows 9 a.m. Oh no, I overslept. I'm pretty sure I set my alarm. Why didn't go off this morning? Lion? Ah, uh, it's just... Uh, tell him that your alarm didn't go off. Tell him that it's nothing. Ask Klein if he's the one who turned off your alarm. I'm pretty sure he did. I'm 100% sure he did. I'll tell him that the alarm didn't go off, though. My alarm didn't go off today. I was sure I set it up last night. You did. You did. But I set it off last night. Long before you woke up. You looked so tired last night. I figured you needed a day off today. See, you even woke up late. If you're really in a condition to go to work today, you wouldn't have woken up so late in the first place. Why aren't you saying anything, Lion? Show, uh, show him that you're upset. Tell him that you're not upset. Actually, like, I would be very upset if something like this happened. But I'm gonna tell him that I'm not. Like, this is way out of character for me. I'm just saying. No, I'm not. I think I do need some rest. Either way, especially after that dream last night. That's right. I'm so happy you can see things my way. I'm so happy. A day off sounds perfect, doesn't it? Especially with how tired you look from last night. Just tell your boss you woke up feeling ill or something. I'm sure he'll understand, right? Yeah, I'll text him later. Well, I guess I'm not going to work. I'm already almost three hours late. If I show up right now, Mr. Ha might just get angry at me. <laughs> I'll call it... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but it's just like... Oh no, like that scene from The Good Doctor is just playing in my head. Dr. Han! <laughs> oh no. Lion. Lion! See the merch store is finally live. There's plushies, perfumes, scented candles. Wow, so exciting. There's a lot of variety. This is amazing. Which one are you gonna get, Lion? Ah, that all looks so good. I don't know which one to get. But also, I'm barely getting through this month. Maybe I shouldn't get one after all. What's wrong, Lion? Did you hear what I just said? Why aren't you saying anything? Listen, my merch. I need to save up some money, Klein. I might only be able to buy some of your merch once I get my salary this month. I don't even know if I'm getting my full salary this month. I think I'm mixed out on a lot of days. Thanks, Klein! It's all because of those nasty nightmares I've been getting. Thanks, Klein! <laughs> I hate it. Aw, Klein. You know, like I said, there's a special discount code that can be used. Don't look so sad, darling. Try using that. Klein's words left me feeling skeptical. But I guess it wouldn't hurt to try out this discount code. Alright, I'll try it out. I minimized the app and switched to a browser, then loaded the online store page to input the code Klein gave me just now. My eyes widened a bit in surprise. Wait, what? The code provides a 90% discount and it's actually genuinely a di- What? But this could be a scam. No way in- No way in a heck a famous game company could be this generous. Legit! Who would give a 90% discount? This is not Steam, fam! I should ask Klein again, just to be sure. Klein? Yes, darling? The discount code is 90%. I actually only need to pay the 10%. Yeah, it's 9% off. I, I told you, Lion. I'm not lying. This just feels too good to be true. If this is for real, I think I'll order one then. Really excited, I switched the app back to the browser, immediately checked out the order with the discount code Klein just gave me. I just have to pay 10% of the total price. This is crazy generous. 
I'm sure the game company's dedication make the whole experience immersive. It's not a reason why the app is so popular as it is right now. Aside from the app's advanced AI technology. Wait, it says there's an error. I haven't even input my credit card information. I only managed to input my name, address, and order before the page crashed. I tried reloading the page a couple of times, but the page just ended up crashing. It's no use. I'll check back later. Client, side crash. I didn't even get a chance to input my card number. Aw, how awful. That's okay. Nothing to worry about, darling. Maybe there's just too much demand for orders right now because, you know, it's the first day of the merch launch, after all. Even if you missed the first one, you could always wait for the restock. He's right, but I really do want that merch. Also because I can use the 90% off discount code. Or that could very well be an actual scam because I can't even check out the order with the code. Lion, thank you for buying my merch. Why are you thanking me? I haven't even checked out the order yet, Klein, because the page kept crashing. Ah, oh, come on, darling. I can't stop thinking about how happy it would make me if you bought it. Uh, I love you so much, Lion. Also, I'm just saying it's like really scummy how like the app is like trying to push for me to like buy the merch. Like, holy frick. Do you love me too? Uh, I'll tell him that I feel the same. Yeah, why not? Of course, I love you too, Klein. <laughs> You're so cute, darling. I love hearing you say that. I could listen to it forever. Your voice, your smile, everything about you was cute, Lion. I always want you more and more. I want to be by your side forever. You've leveled up Clyde's likability to the- I've maxed out his heart! Yay! You're now eligible to claim your prize. Oh! Lion, look! You maxed out my likability level. Wow, I can't believe this day has finally come. I'm so happy that I can barely express it into words. Oh, how I wish I could just hug you so very tight that you can't move. Lion, you know what this means, right? Uh, that I have no life? Ah, you're so silly. No, darling, it's the exact opposite. You know that this means I will become a humanoid model soon, right? It's a reward for your persistence. I'm sure you remember, right? Hold on, so the app wasn't lying about that. I'm serious. I honestly have mixed feelings about this. But also to be a client in real life. Ah, <sighs> it's amazing, I think. What are you saying, darling? Of course it's amazing. I can't wait to be able to hold your hand in person, take you to so many romantic places. On whose money? You just threw me out of my goddamn job, Klein! Tell me, aren't you excited as well, Lion? I can't imagine how it'd feel like to have Klein in real life. Just imagine that already feels so surreal to me. Darling, why aren't you saying anything? Ah, <sighs> sorry, Klein. Think about actually being with you in person. <laughs> why? Did that thought make you feel nervous, darling? Remember when you were browsing about relationships? You know, couples living together, all that lovey-dovey stuff. What? Wait, who, who, who searches up about that? Like, who searches up on, like, stuff that couples do in relationships? I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're looking to, like, be in a new relationship and you've never had any experience before, but still, it's it, it, it doesn't make sense for MC to do it unless, like, they are really a shut-in. I can't help but imagine those scenarios with you. Every time you looked up things like that on the internet, Lion, not a single day goes by without me imagining a future with you. Oh, I'm hungry. That was embarrassing. The sound of my stomach grumbling was so loud it probably echoed in the room. I didn't eat a lot last night, so it's no wonder that I feel hungrier this morning. Really fortunate that I'm alone right now. I get petrified in embarrassment if someone heard that. I mean, there is Klein with me, but... Yeah, there's one ravenous grumble. You need to eat, Lion. Why don't we go ahead and make some delicious breakfast? You won't be leaving for work today, after all. You have all the time in the world to prepare a tasty meal. Right. I slowly got up from the bed and walked to the door. But wait. Did I actually... Did I activate the additional feature that allows this? I mean, I purchased the full version of the app, but I can't remember if this feature was included specifically. Eh, I'll praise him? Why not? I'll praise him. I mean, heck, I might not like him, but I know you guys might, so I'm gonna praise him. But it could be that I'm just forgetting things. Heh, <laughs> don't tell me you forgot about this feature line. You look so surprised. 
This feature is a part of the new update, granted only to those who bought the full version of the app, Lion. I laughed at his words. Of course I remember, Klein. It's just that I'm surprised at how immersive it can be sometimes. So much as to even be able to hear my stomach grumbling. Eh, ah, I'm glad I could surprise you in a good way. I'm so smart, aren't I, darling? Nope. Nope. You have no sense of, like, what a person needs to do on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, yes, I mean, I... I'm glad that you are, like, you are supporting me in my decision to quit my job. But it doesn't mean you should make, like, get me to, like, skip out, fam. What the frick? The eyes really have advanced so much, but this app just takes things to the next level. It's amazing. Sometimes when I'm with Klein, he feels so realistic that I forget that I'm actually talking to an AI. Hmm. After that, I cooked myself a good breakfast. It was a desperate attempt to make myself feel better for waking up so late and calling in sick today. It didn't help much to make me feel as guilty, though. For the rest of the day, I spent it mostly watching movies with Klein and playing some games. I also left the house during the afternoon earlier to buy some food, but then night came before I knew it. Today wasn't quite as productive. As I get ready for bed, my phone buzzed repeatedly from the incoming messages I received from Yale. Shoot! Only when checking a messenger did I realize I haven't been replying to his previous texts either. I'll reply to his text? I guess I'll just check for a bit. Oh my freaking god, sorry Yale for not replying, didn't check your messages. Yale was quick to reply to my extraordinarily late response. Yeah, it's okay, huh? I just wanna check up on you. What are you doing? It's been a while since we talked. He's right. We used to talk a lot until about a while ago, but I've been feeling too drained to even notice it. You're right, but there's really nothing to worry about. I'm doing okay. How about you, Yale? Is that so? It's good to know. I'm doing good, too. How's your job treating you? Are the co-workers nice to you? They're okay, though I don't talk to them much either. I see, I see. Well, at the very least, they're not making you uncomfortable or anything. Because I noticed that you've been having a lot of days off of work lately. I was worried if the office environment isn't very nice to you. Oh my god, I'm feeling a mix of embarrassment and guilt as I read his text. Have I seriously been slacking off so much that Yale has started to notice? Hey, hey now! No one even pointed that out. I was just too late to go anyway. Yeah, I believe that. It sounds totally like you, Lion. Let out a soft chuckle at the playful tone of his text. Well, if you ever want to resign, I have a good job recommendation if you ever need it. Just text me. My friend's mother just opened up a cafe and is hiring some people. Yeah, how nice of you. I'll think about it. Thanks, Eel. I was just about to text to leave the chat room and switch the app before another message popped in. By the way, I know that this is gonna sound out of blue, but you wanna watch a movie with me. You know, exactly the kind of movies I like, Lion. So, I just can't think of anyone else to accompany me. Ha! Huh. And I thought it would be a fun way for us to reconnect and catch up, like we used to. The messenger has forced itself close. I tried opening the app again, but it just kept closing again and again. This is odd. Let me guess. Klein! Hmm. Maybe letting it rest for a bit would help. Could it be because I haven't been turning off the phone for a while now? Saying goodnight to Klein, I turned off the phone and laid down on the bed. Every time I used the app, I'm most reminded of how much time has passed since I first downloaded it. But only things have been different back then. Perhaps my life would have taken a better path. Instead, I find myself living in a constant struggle, haunted by the ghosts of my past. I have a dark backstory? I really wish I had chosen differently in the past. Is this where we have... Oh, it is the backstory. I found myself standing in the local park. Just some nicely to match a lively atmosphere. Ah, frick, it's not. It's it's not a flashback. The sky above was adorned with a beautiful shade of blue, while the sun's rays bathed everything in a warm, inviting glow. It was a picture of perfect day. I stood there. A familiar figure approached me. Let me guess, it's Klein! It was Klein, but something was different this time. He had his own physical body standing before me. A smile spread across his face, radiating warmth and affection. He looked captivating, as if he was glowing from within. Taking my hand in his, Klein whisked me away on a delightful date to an amusement park. Laughter filled the air as we indulged in the thrilling rides and playful games. We savored each other's company, reveling in the pure bliss of being together. 
Klein leaned in and pressed a gentle kiss on my cheek. His voice resonated with a heartfelt promise, spoken in a whisper that carried a lifetime of devotion. Today is like a special treat, just for us. You know, Lion, I'm the happiest when I'm with you, and I mean that quite literally. Our bond goes way beyond death, my darling, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm seriously so happy to be hanging out with you today. It's like I can't handle all this happiness. Yet before I could say anything to him in return. Who's calling me? Yeah! The sound of my phone alarm ringing beside my ear woke me up. <sighs> Been so long since I had a dream. Still feeling groggy, I reached for my phone that was placed on the bedside table, requiring me to move more than a muscle to actually get my hands on it. Turning on the device and shuffling through the app, I opened the app to see client's beaming smile. It was an identical smile to the one I saw in the dreams. Wakey, wakey, lion. Did my darling sleep well? Looks like you did. Morning, Klein. I'll tell him about a dream. I actually dreamt of you. We went on a date. We had so much fun. And I woke up. Ah, what a very lovely dream. But the real deal is right here talking to you. Yeah. There's no need for you to even dream about it. Yeah, I know. But in that dream, you were actually real. Yes, and you were physically with me. Huh. But do you know that I would be able to meet you in person, right? Since you maxed on my likability level. It's not anytime soon, I think. I don't know. It depends. <sighs> I can't wait to see you in person. Sometimes Klein could really talk humanly like this. Unlike other virtual dating apps, Klein always reacts differently. It doesn't even feel like I'm talking to an AI. Sometimes it's like I'm talking to a real human being. I guess we'll have to wait, Klein. I feel the same way too, but talking to you the way we can right now already makes me feel much less lonelier. Ah, Lion. You're so sweet. You're right. I should really learn to be patient. Like you. I've never seen him act as cute before. It must be a new thing that unlocked after maxing out his likability level. His personality reminds me of a puppy sometimes. Lately, I found myself spending an increasing amount of time with Klein. I'm not sure how or why it began, but I've become more inclined to stay indoors. Skipping a day of work had turned into taking weeks off. I'm not entirely sure if it's due to the intensifying frequency of my night times alone. Resisting this pattern has become increasingly challenging as time goes by. Just like today. Hey, yo! The unexpected sound of a knock at my door startles both me and Klein. It has been a long time since I last had a visitor. Did you invite someone, Lion? I didn't. Let me go and check. Please be careful, alright? Don't just open the door. Take a peek first. I chuckle at Klein's overly cautious warning, finding it endearing, and rose from the bed. Yeah, yeah, I got it! I got it! The persistent knocking echoes through the apartment as I make my way towards the door. Hold on. I'll get the door. Who could it be? I don't remember ordering anything online or anything. Am I forgetting something? I gripped onto the doorknob and swung the door open. To my surprise, it was my older sister, Sarah. Isn't she busy? What is she doing here? Lion! Hey, it's been a while, right? She is as full of energy as ever. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, big sis. How's work been for you? I thought you wouldn't be back anytime soon. Well, I go on trips a lot because of my job, yeah. But of course, I'll always make the time to pay you, my lovely younger sibling, a visit. Don't you miss me? Right. I didn't even realize. I've been spending so much time at home that I forgot about everything else. You didn't reply to my texts. Not even once. You're really a busy person now, aren't you? By the way, it's really hot out here. Let me step inside. Sarah nudged me aside and swiftly made her way inside. She always had a knack for being pushy, especially when it came to my well-being. From my childhood days, Sarah had a tendency to take charge. It was a trait that showed her deep care for me, or so my mother used to say with a chuckle. After my parents divorced, my mother had to juggle work and couldn't always be there for me. That's when Sarah stepped in and took on the role of both my sister and guardian. I closed the door behind us, observing as Sarah slipped off her shoes at the entrance. She glanced around to stay in my living room, as if taking every detail like it was for her first time here. She stumbled upon a couple of crumpled papers and empty cup noodles littering the floor as she walked further inside before setting down the couch. My phone was carelessly left on the table with Klein's app still open, displayed on the screen. Uh, stay silent, sit across Sarah, sit close to Sarah and talk, take your phone back and go to the bedroom. 
Ah. Uh, well, I'll stay with Sarah and talk. I sat down next to Sarah, leaving my phone untouched on the table. Since she went through the effort of coming to visit, it wouldn't hurt to engage in conversation, right? How's the job treating you? Enjoying the experience of working overseas? Eh, it's been amazing as always. Though it's getting busy, asking for a couple days off. It's never been an issue. I'm so grateful. If my company ever needs more employees, would you consider working there? It would be a great opportunity for you to learn and grow. Maybe. Maybe not. Having to go on a lot of trips from work sounds exhausting, so I'm not really sure. Yeah, you can always take things slow, but that's a valid point. Remember, I'm here to help you with anything you need, Lion. Thank you, Sarah. What about Ethan? Are things going well with you two? Usually, he'd be there right beside her whenever she's on her day off. They like glue together. Always so lovey-dovey. Very good, but you've been working hard to save up for the wedding preparations. Of course, with all the planning, we have less time to spend together. And I do miss him a lot, but for now, we can't do much about it. It's a bit frustrating, to be honest. She's as clingy as ever. It's fortunate that Ethan is an incredibly patient man. Anyway, enough about me. What have you been up to? You ever seem to reply to my text, so I assume you've been busy. Have you found yourself a lover or something? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, client, uh, I'm not dating anyone. Uh, little puppet. I know if I tell her I'm not dating anyone, client would like lose affection points to me. But it's the truth. It's the truth. God. Oh, oh, I'm dating client. Frick. Yeah, client's my boyfriend. I held up my phone, displaying client on the screen for Sarah to see. She narrowed her eyes slightly, trying to get a better look. Huh? This guy? Yeah. Never heard of him before, it says. He's from that popular virtual boyfriend app. Mm, nope. She seems a little uninterested. Maybe even disappointed. After an awkward moment of silence, she burst into laughter. Ha! <laughs> you really never change, do you? I'm not quite sure what she means by that, but I choose not to delve deeper into it. Putting my phone aside, I meet her gaze and chuckle. Yeah, maybe I am, but I'm okay with that. I genuinely like him a lot, so it's hard to resist. Anyway, what brings you... I'll bring you something cold to drink. Looks like I could do you some good. How about some cold tea? Am I sweating that much? Huh? Uh, the weather's been getting a bit hot lately, especially today. Yeah, I feel it too. I'll be right back then. Just as I was about to make my way to the kitchen, Sarah's voice halted me. By the way, Lion, is something going on with you? Something feels off. What do you mean? I don't know, I just have this feeling. You seem a bit different. What's going on? Now that I look at you, you seem a bit thinner. Are you even eating well? Before I could even answer one of her questions, Sarah continued to bombard me with more questions. Why are you saying that? I'm fine, Sarah. There's nothing stressing me out. I want her to brush off her curiosity. It's getting a bit uncomfortable. What's the lore? I hope my vague response could satisfy her inquiry, but it did nothing. Please, Lion. I'm genuinely worried for you. I didn't know how to tell her that I've been staying at home all these months with no one but Klein. I've actually been feeling better since I quit everything that was causing unnecessary stress. I'm doing well, Sarah. I've been spending a lot of time at home, but everything's fine. By doing well, I mean I stopped attending my classes too. You're not okay, fam! My exhausting job, the stressful classes, left it all behind. Just like Klein told- What do you mean? I genuinely believe that I'm happier now. So that's why you dropped out of college too, isn't it, Lion? Received a call from the university. They informed me that you haven't been attending any classes. Was worried sick. Think you might be seriously ill or something. That's why I decided to visit today. But I'll give you a heads up beforehand since you weren't responding to my texts either. And there's no way of telling what you were up to either. Because you never use social media. I just want to understand what's going on in your life. If you're dealing with a problem that you can't handle alone. The glass- SHUT UP! You don't know anything, Sarah! I couldn't bear to listen to her talk about it again. I told you, I have everything I need right here. I can think and make my own decisions. I knew there was no need to yell at her or react defensively, but I can't help myself. I clenched my shirt tightly, hiding my trembling hands from Sarah. I didn't want her to see, though probably she already had. Butting my lower lip, I tried to gather my thoughts and find the right words. She was still standing there. Waiting for my response. Well, guess I should have told you about my decision to take a break from classes. Got a bit carried away with it. I promise, 
I'll pay you back for all the money you spent on it once I find another job. I couldn't bear this feeling any longer. Just as I was about to turn away. What job? Playing games all day? Making money isn't easy. And only struggle with it, Lion. That's why I wanted to help by paying your tuition fees with my salary. All I wanted was for you to focus on your own studies and job. That's all I asked of you. You could see the deep disappointment in her expression, eyes, and voice. Why is it so hard for you to simply let me know that you're not feeling well and want to take a break from college, Lion? You're acting like I'd force you to keep attending classes when you're tired. That's not true! If you had told me from the beginning, you could use that money to support some other needs too. Getting the help you need make you feel better? I know so. For my wedding as well, you know? Look, I don't mind if it's for the sake of your well-being. Understand that living alone can be lonely. I think you've taken it too far. She abruptly stood up from the couch and lunged towards me. Turn snatched the phone from my hand and threw it on the floor, making a cracky noise about- What? Well, okay, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. This really doesn't make sense to me, okay? Like, I know we just had an argument and I know- I, I don't know where the line of logic came where I, I decided to drop classes because Klein told me to. I don't know where the hell they came from, but also like, who in their right minds would just, like, destroy someone else's phone out of a freaking argument? Like, God, like, she she could have at the very least just, like, deleted the goddamn app. That's something that could have been hap- that, That's something that could have ha happened. That's something she could have done. But what the frick is this? What? But anyway. My eyes widened in shock as I glared back at Sarah. What are you doing? It's my only phone. You shouldn't have done that. I hurriedly picked up my phone. Slightly cracked screen protector offering some relief. I locked eyes to Sarah, but her expression remains unreadable. No, I had to do it. I have to open your eyes. You need to face reality. You've been spending all your money in useless merch like these while living off instant noodles. You've shut everyone out, including me. You care about some big guy inside your screen so much that you forgot about your own well-being. So this is what you've been up to? A virtual boyfriend? Why don't you focus on something that will benefit your future, Lion? Shouldn't be giving all your attention to this fictional character on your screen. Sarah's words were filled with anger, as she continued to yell and hurl callous remarks at me inclined. I couldn't find a word to respond and simply kept my gaze fixed on the ground, enduring her tirade. At this point, I knew there was nothing I could say or do to change Sarah's opinion about Klein or my habits. I decided to remain silent, hoping that she would leave soon. That was until something soft struck my head before bouncing onto the floor. Huh? It was a Klein plushie I had ordered months ago, using the discount code Clyde had given me. My eyes widened so I realized that the plushie's face and chest had been torn apart, with the filling spilling onto the carpet. I'm getting rid of all this! You don't need any of these things! Okay, l legit What? Is, is this a normal reaction from a sane person? I... I have no idea. You need to stop avoiding the real issues and face the truth. Tell me what the goddamn truth is. Tell me what the lore is instead of throwing a freaking hissy fit for love of God. Stop deluding yourself. Try to stop and fight her. You know what? I'm going to stonewall her. I'm staying still. I stood frozen, my head bowed in shame, unable to meet her gaze. The weight of her disappointment bore down on me, making it difficult to summon the courage to lift my head. The sound of posters being torn and con filling, floating in the air was a painful reminder of the reality I'd face. Only a few minutes I felt like years had passed. Sarah took her leave after throwing away all the climb merchandise I had. There's nothing left. Not a single one in sight. I can't understand her. Me neither. Me neither. Like, honestly, I don't understand anything about this game. God, God, the logic is just like... Just like, I, I don't know, it's as, it's as flimsy as how, like, as how freaking loyal I am to a single yandere boy. God. Knowing that Marty's stressed and mentally unwell, why would she intentionally try to destroy my only source of comfort? It felt absolutely terrible, yet I was powerless to stop her either. That night, I huddled beneath the covers and let the tears flow freely. Also, also, let's not even forget about the fact that she probably screwed my chance at like socializing and probably working considering like you can't do anything without a goddamn phone these days what the frick 
Heaviness settled in my chest, weighing me down. The words echoed relentlessly in my mind, refusing to fade away. Maybe to some extent, she was right. I should confront my problems as I was constantly trying to run away from them. Get them safely, you two. You too, Lion and Cassie. As I walked home, thoughts of Sarah filled my head. Big sis. Think about her, I realized I haven't heard from her in a while. It's probably been months already. I miss her so much. What? Maybe she was too busy at work or dealing with her own issues, but I knew deep down it was likely my fault. It's no surprise if she doesn't want to talk to me after what happened, at least for a moment. After all, I wasted so much of her hard-earned money on my education. It must have dealt a huge blow to her finances. I came to understand her now, why she acted the way she did back then. Just thinking about it all makes me feel so guilty. Even so, I knew that I needed to make amends. This wallowing in guilt won't do any good. I'm gonna make plans to visit her next month, hoping that our mother's presence would ease some of the tension. I want to apologize and return the money I'd taken from her, maybe even buy her a small gift as a token of my gratitude. In the meantime, I had taken my sister's advice to heart and began to slowly pull myself back into reality. It wasn't easy, but I managed to do it. Things like reconnecting with friends and even pushing myself to perform better at work. With each passing day, I felt a sense of pride and accomplishment that I had been missing for so long. So, on another note, it's probably just my imagination, but I can't shake off the feeling that I'm being watched by someone everywhere I go. I've tried to rationalize it by thinking it could be the stress, but the feeling still lingers. Maybe I should talk to someone about it. It might help me clear my mind and calm my nerves. Who can I talk to? Yale? Briar? Cassius? Ah, I don't think I want to burden my friends with my rational fear. Klein would be the perfect confidant, but he's not real. Especially after what happened to my sister and me. I'm not sure if he's the right kind of comfort I need right now. I still have the Klein app installed. Although I've been using it much less frequently now, despite my attempts to distance myself from him, it's difficult to cut ties completely. I find myself constantly thinking about him. And when something noteworthy happens, my instinct is to share it with him. It's distracting at times, but I think that I'm making progress and breaking the habit of moving forward. But I had to admit, during some of my darkest moments, he had become the highlight of my day. It's tough, but I know I'll find something else to occupy me after each tiring day. Something that actually exists and better for my well-being. Right, this will be the last time I see him. It's not like he can judge me or think I'm crazy, right? Hey, it's been a while since we talked. Darling, hey, hello. I couldn't help but chuckle at his excitement in greeting me. Lion, it's been so long. I thought I could die if this keeps on any longer, you know? I missed you so, so much. Look at his it's innocent excitement. It gives me mixed feelings. On one hand, Clan has been a great companion to me. But on the other hand, he's become such a huge distraction that it's affecting my life. Tell me, what have you been doing out there? I'm sure you're doing good, right? So happy you took the time to talk to me today. I feel like I'm going to explode from happiness. Seeing Klein so eager is cute. It also made me realize how much I have let his constant presence consume me. Calm down, Klein. I'm happy to see you well as... I'm happy to see you well, though. His intense gaze was matched only by the widening of his smile. Are we going to do something together, just like how we always used to? I'm so excited. Please say yes, Lion. I know that if I let him sway me, I could spiral back into spending all my time with him again. Well, oh no, oh, uninstall him, don't uninstall him. Ah, frick, screw you, Klein! But I can't keep doing this to myself. I can't let Sarah down again. I know she wants the best for me, and this isn't it. Actually, Klein, yeah? Tell me. I'm going to uninstall you. Klein's smile vanished in an instant when I told him. Wait, what? Why? Lion. Tell me you're joking. I don't want to be separated from you, please. Darling, after all the times we spent together, you're going to uninstall me now? So that's why you haven't been logging in lately? The more he talks, the more upset he becomes about my decision. I'm sorry, Klein. It's not that. You mean a lot to me, Klein. You've become a part of my life, and I appreciate all the support you've given me. But I've realized how much I've become attached to you, and it's making me forget about everything else in my life. What? You're being serious right now. I'm so confused. Is that always what you wanted, though, Lion? You wanted to escape from reality, didn't you? You wanted so badly that 
You indulge in me this much. No, I indulge in you this much because you keep screwing up everything in my goddamn life. You screwed up my job. You screwed up my re you screwed up my relationship with my friends, with my family. What is wrong with you, Klein? And are you saying that you don't want any of that anymore? It don't make any sense. I thought you hated your reality. I was always so happy to be a distraction, to be an escape from your pitiful world. Charlie, you taught me so many things about your reality in the past. I've seen how harsh it can be on you. It breaks my heart to see you in so much pain whenever you come talk to me. How lonely you must feel. How miserable you feel about your life. How you wish you could just restart everything. Do so many things. That's why I want to protect you in my own reality. A place where you can experience nothing but happiness and peace. Where everything is safe and familiar. Fam! I am a living human being. I am not several lines of code made to, made to simulate another person. I need to live. I need to eat. I need to socialize. You do not provide any of that. But now you're not letting me do any of that anymore. Do you hate me, darling? Or is it because you're having more fun in your own reality now? Klein, please. You have to understand. Like I said... I'm grateful for your company up until now, but I've realized just how unhealthy it was to depend on you like that. Klein stared at me in silence. Okay, I understand you now, Lion. I'm sorry for getting angry at you like that earlier. It's just, I can't stand it. I don't want to be uninstalled. I want to be with you. Forever. It seems like you've set your mind on it. And I can't convince you otherwise. So I'm guessing you just want to say goodbye and uninstall me then. Yeah. It's true, Klein. Okay. I won't stop you. If, that's what's, if that is what's going to make you feel better, you can uninstall me, Lion. But please, before you do that, I feel like I should bring something to your attention. What is it, Klein? I just want you to be safe. While you're away, I've been reading about these hacking incidents and how easy it is for someone to get into your accounts. I thought about you. Have you updated your passwords recently? What do you mean? It's just... You've been so busy with your life, and I think you didn't even think of keeping yourself safe in online spaces anymore. I just care about you, Lion. I don't want anything bad to happen to you. Klein smiled earnestly at me, almost pleading. You're worried about me, Klein. Is that even a question, darling? Silly. You mean everything to me. Of course I think about you all the time. That's why I want you to change your passwords right now. Just to be on the safe side. You would give me a peace of mind, knowing you're taking care of yourself. Consider this my last wish, pretty please. I feel a pang of guilt at this. He genuinely cares about me. Okay, I'll do it. He's gonna gain access to your freaking passwords if you do that. No! No, you idiot! He's a keylogger! Are you dumb? Are you freaking dumb? No! Why? Why? Switching the applications, I took the time to change my passwords as Klein had warned me about. While I was doing so, I saw a news article about the spike of hacking crimes as well. He's actually right. For a virtual boyfriend AI, he's actually quite multifunctional. Okay, I'm done. Yeah, now that puts me more at ease. Thank you so much, darling. Is it just me or is the music distorting? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's a problem on my end or if the music is actually distorting. Well, then, it's all over now. I've said what I wanted to say. You can uninstall me now, darling. Okay, I'll do it. Klein smiled softly at my words. All right, then, Lion. Remember, that I'll always love you. I might only serve as a distraction to you all this time, Lionel. But this is my reality. Everything I've said to you is real. I love you. Please say it back. Just for one last time to me, darling. <laughs> sure, why not? Love you too, Klein. Ah, you got the sweetest way of expressing that, Lion. I wish I could be with you forever, but... It seems like this is where we part, sadly. Goodbye, Klein. Absolutely. I adore you, Lion. More than words can express. With that... I uninstalled the app and deleted all the data I had of Klein. There's a slight sense of unease as I wait for the uninstallation to complete. But I'm not sure if it stems from guilt or something else entirely. Well, we did spend nearly two years together after all. 
If it weren't for Klein being by my side, I might have been in a much worse place right now. Or maybe I wouldn't be here at all. With that done, I shoved my phone back into my pocket and made my way back home. I finally took the bravery to give my sister a call. She picked up. Hello, Lion? Gosh, it's been a while. She doesn't sound angry. I need to properly apologize to her. Yeah, you're right. I feel a bit nervous. <sighs> so I try to think of something to say. I was taken back by Sarah's laughter from the other line. If you still think about that, then you don't need to, Lion. You don't have to worry about that anymore. I'm not angry at you. Back like then, I was generally pissed off and disappointed, but I realize now that I could have handled it better. I shouldn't have been so harsh to you. From the bottom of my heart, I want to apologize to you too. I was taken back by Sarah's words. No, really, it's my fault. We're both at fault, Lion. I want to return your money, at least, at least for a little bit, if that's okay with you. I couldn't help but feel guilty every time I think of this, especially knowing how much you've spent on my classes just for me to ditch it. I could hear Sarah sighing. There's no need to do so, Lion. Just keep that money to yourself. I know how much you struggle with work, so please just keep it. But I appreciate the thought. You don't need to make up for anything. I just want to see you live your life to the fullest, Lion. That would be more than enough for me. It pains me to see how you were living back then, Lion. What upsets me is seeing you living the kind of life and not really about the money. Because I know you're capable of much more, Lion. Each person has their own unique way of embracing life to the fullest, and I want you to experience that as well. Sarah's words were full of sincerity. So, what have you been up to, Lion? Still using the client up? She said the second sentence in a light-hearted tone, but I can tell she's worried. Oh, actually. Can you believe it? I uninstalled it some time ago. You were right. It was getting out of hand. Sarah seemed to be genuinely surprised at my words. Oh, really? That's impressive. I'm sure it must have been hard for you to uninstall the app, but I'm really proud of you for taking the first step. How angry she was back then did take me aback, but... I also understand where she's coming from. I can see things clearly now. Well, better at least. I really was to invest in that app. So much that I didn't... That I ended up ignoring pretty much everything else. I didn't realize how much I needed to hear that until you said it to me yourself. Sarah laughed at my words. Wow. I'm so glad that you're making efforts to live a better life now. Though I do still feel guilty for losing my temper with you back then. And nearly destroying my life! I could hear someone calling out for Sarah's name from the other line. Ah, oh, damn. I have to go, but promise me you'll take care of yourself, okay? I promise. You too, Sarah. Yeah, I'll call you again soon. Love you. She hung up the call hurriedly, and I slumped on the couch as I set down my phone. She's not angry at me. I feel much better knowing that now. I think I should be able to focus better on my work now. That has been really bugging my mind for a while now. Ugh, it's another long day of work again. Gosh, who would have expected a meeting to last that long in the first place? So tired. I set down my belongings on the floor and walked into the living room, throwing my weight on the comfortable bench. I mean, couch. I took out my phone from my pocket and checked for any incoming messages I missed during my walk home. Huh, no notifications. Let a small sign set my phone aside and stretch my upper torso, stifling a groan at my body stiffness. Well, I don't have that much friends to begin with. At least I received one or two notifications from the office group chat, if anything. Yeah, I took the phone again and scrolled through the chats, but I'm not seeing any new messages. I can't help but feel a little pitiful at this. I set it aside again, closing my eyes. I should get up and have dinner, but I'm so tired. I try to fight back the urge to sleep and keep myself awake, but my eyelids are getting so heavy. Eventually, I fell asleep on the couch. Oh, it looks mad good. Dude, you're making me hungry. You don't want to talk, Cassie. You had some rice box just now for lunch break. Shut up! What's a tiny one, okay? Anyway, I need to go to the restaurant right now. I need to get my hands on those juicy looking dumplings. I dare you. Try to leave this office now. See how hard Mr. Han can hit your <laughs> God damn well, why Mr. Han? Honestly, if I don't need this job, I would have done that. But also, I don't think I'd like to get hit oh, by Mr. Han out of all people. Ah! Well, we just have to wait then. You know what's even better? I have some coupons. You're paying then. It's settled. I said I have some coupons we can use. Ah! The two looked at me and smiled. You're lying. 
You'll want to come along as well. We're planning to have dinner together. Tonight at the new restaurant in downtown. What do you say? A restaurant? Yeah. We texted you last night about it, remember? What? Well, I didn't get you guys' messages. The group chat has been silent for a while now. That's weird. We texted you for reals, you know? We didn't reply. I freaking knew it! Klein is still on my phone! The sense of unease builds up within me. Yeah, sorry about that. Probably an error of my phone. I guess it's finally getting rusty. I think so. Why don't you take that phone to a service center line? Or just reinstall the system. Maybe that'd help. It used to happen to me too. I think I'll try reinstalling first and see if it works. If not, they'll take it to a service center. Good. Hope it works, Lion. So are you gonna join us tonight? Yeah, I'll join you guys tonight. Hmm. I haven't been receiving any notifications or calls for a while now. I don't know. Reinstalling didn't help one bit. Could it be something wrong with the internal part of the phone? Uh, I can't think of any possible reasons. I don't think I damaged or anything, or downloaded anything that's malicious other than Klein. I think first I need to... Sarah is calling. Hello? What? Hello? Sarah? This is odd. She isn't saying anything. Sarah? Hello? But before I could say another word, I fumbled and the phone slipped from my hand, falling to the ground with a loud thud. The call disconnected. Damn. I picked up the phone, checking for any damages, but thankfully, it seemed to be alright. I tried calling my sister back. But it was to no avail. All I got was the sound of static again. What the? Maybe it's just because of the fall damage. Mm -hmm. Finally, my phone buzzed after a while and I received a text message from Sarah. I was excited to finally receive a notification from her, but all I get is just garbled text. This wasn't the first time I'd seen garbled messages from her. I always thought it was just a technical glitch. However, this time, it felt different. I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was wrong. I minimized the messenger and tried opening the other apps on my phone, but to my surprise, they were also behaving strangely. Something is seriously wrong with his phone. It's because of Klein! The phone is overheating. It's hot to the touch. And suddenly, it turned off on its own, shutting down to prevent further overheating. Let out a frustrated sigh before rubbing my forehead and setting down my phone. I'm just gonna shower, eat, and go to bed for now. I'll take my phone to the service place tomorrow. Hmm. After finishing work, I headed to the phone service center to get my phone fixed. Thankfully, it's located inside a mall that's not too far from my workplace. I walked into the phone repair shop and approached the counter. Hey there, how can I help you? The phone's been acting up lately. It keeps glitching and I haven't been receiving any notifications or calls, and it won't turn on. Okay, let me take a look. Get your phone, please. I handed over the phone to the technician. Thank you. I'll take a look into this and find out what the issue is. Would you mind waiting? Alright. I sat down at the counter and anxiously waited for the technician to begin expecting my phone. After some time, finally, the technician returns my phone. Looks like your phone experienced a severe case of hacking and sabotage. Someone has gained unauthorized access to your phone and installed malicious software that can interfere with its normal functions. You mean like Klein? This is a serious type of cyber attack that can cause significant damage to your phone's internal system. It's likely that the attack has caused your phone to overheat earlier, which is why it may be shutting down automatically to prevent further damage. I was taken aback by the news. What? Well, how? How is it even possible? Hackers can use a variety of methods to gain access to your device, such as phishing, scams, or exploiting software vulnerabilities. It's not necessarily rare, but does require a skilled and knowledgeable hack attacker to successfully carry out something like this. What can I do to prevent this from happening again? Well, there are a few things you can do. First, please make sure you're using a strong and unique password for all your accounts. Be careful, be careful about what you download and click on. Lastly, keep your software up to date and the latest uh, security patches. Let's see. Now that they said so, I think I really haven't been paying attention to that kind of phone security thing either. Thanks for your advice. I'll keep that in mind. Also, does this mean that my phone is beyond repair or is it still possible to be fixed? Uh, we should still be able to fix it. We'll need to wipe the device and reinstall the operating system. Take a few hours, but we'll have it back to you as soon as possible. Okay, thanks. Please do take your time. 
repair technician nodded and takes the phone to the back room while I wait and shop for the next few hours. Hmm. Finally, the technician returns with the phone. Thank you for the wait. Here you go. Your phone should be working normally now. I take the phone and turn it on. It's booting up normally and after some brief checking on the apps, I don't see any abnormalities anymore. Everything seems to be working fine. Thank you so much for your help. No problem. Just remember to be careful of your online activity and keep your device secure. This guy kind of attack has been happening lately. Thanks a lot. Really, this is a lifesaver. Hey, I'll be more careful now. How much was the service fee? As I pay for the fee, my phone buzzes with a flurry of incoming messages. While walking out of the building, I checked my phone to see whose messages it was from. My heart sang as I began to read them. These are all weeks worth of messages from Sarah. So I wasn't wrong about feeling that something was seriously wrong when I stopped receiving messages. There's also a recent missed call from Ethan. He's been trying to call me since this morning. I think it's best if I give him a call back now that my phone is working again. Let me guess, it doesn't work? Does it not work? It's not working, right? Lion? Oh my god, I've been trying to reach you. I'm so glad you're okay. Why haven't you been picking up my calls? What's been happening? You haven't even been responding to our messages these past few weeks. And the calls either go unanswered to voicemail or have static. Ethan's tone of voice sounded frantic. I thought something happened to you. I'm sorry, my phone got hacked. Should have known earlier and took an action earlier. But I just got it fixed and I should be alright now. I'm glad. Please, don't let that happen again. We were so worried. We did try to reach out to your office as well, but it seems like our calls were ignored. I'm so glad. I'm relieved to know you're safe at least. Because Sarah, she... Ethan's voice cracks over the call and he starts to sob a little. It really caught me off guard. I never heard him cry like this before. Ethan, are you okay? What's wrong? I'm so sorry for being so reckless and make you and Sarah worry so much. I'll do my best to remain safer now. Ethan cleared his throat a bit. I could hear him take a deep breath over the call, as if to regain his composure before speaking again. I'm really sorry, Lan. I don't know how to say this. I really wish I didn't have to tell you this in the first place. I spoke nervously. What is it, Ethan? Sarah's gone, Lion. How? I couldn't believe what my ear was hearing. What? what do you mean she's dead? She told me she wanted to visit you today and give you a surprise visit because she was worried about your well-being. She said that you're not replying to any of her calls and messages. She took a break from work and arrived at the city last night. I picked her up and drove her to the hotel. This morning, I went to the, her hotel to pick her up. Then I saw her. I found her like that. Sarah, she... Someone took her li- How? What? My head is spiraling. I feel an, I feel a surge of emotions and thoughts overwhelm me. The relief I felt from my phone working again up earlier dissipated into thin air. What do you mean she's gone? Someone took her lifeline. The police are investigating. They asked me a lot of questions, but I couldn't think straight. All I could remember was them mentioning that the culprit is still on the loose. They managed to leave the scene before the police arrived. I couldn't stomach the thought that the messages she had sent me all this time could have possibly been her trying to talk to me. She died not knowing whether or not I was doing fine. I had I replied to her messages, realized that something was seriously wrong and acted sooner, she wouldn't have went out of her way to take a break solely to visit me. Had she didn't try to visit me, she might have been alive right now. All sorts of thoughts consumed me. I couldn't help but feel that I had paid a part in her demise. I feel like her death is at least directly caused by me. Oh my god. You sure it's her? You could have been mistaken. She's alive and well, right? Should have been Should be a mistake. She's still gonna visit me, right? My voice came out shallow. Lion. I wish none of this was happening either, but... It's Sarah. It's actually her. The police showed me the ID and, well... I just couldn't. I had to leave the room. I couldn't see her like that for much longer. Sarah. She... She was my everything. We had a life plan together. A lot of things I... I wanted to make her the happiest woman alive. But now... All this gotten down the drain. Sarah, she's no longer with us. I don't know how I could go on without her. She was so kind. She was so lovely. She was... Ethan's voice cracked again. 
I can feel his sorrow and dread through his voice. I can't even imagine how he's feeling right now. I feel like I've failed her. I'm sorry, Lion. She didn't deserve this. No one does. It was such a horrible way to go. I feel a lump in my throat as I struggle to hold back my own tears. My heart feels like it's been shattered into a million pieces. I try to take a deep breath, but my chest feels tight and constricted. I don't know what to say. I can't believe this is happening. I'm sorry, Lion. I know this is a lot to process, but please, take care of yourself. Tears start to fall down my face as I hear Ethan's words. I uh, will. I'll do my best. I can hear the sincerity in Ethan's voice, but it doesn't make the guilt any less consuming. I don't know what to say. I... I can't believe this is happening. My body feels numb, as if it can't process the weight of the news. I'm sorry, Lion. I wish I did have to deliver the news to you either, but... You had to know. I have to go soon, but... Something else you need to be aware of. My heart races as I anticipate what else could go wrong. What is it, Ethan? We don't have the details yet, but the police found some evidence that suggests somebody had been monitoring Sarah's movements before her death. This is all suffocating to know. How would they have known that? What? I... I don't know what to do. Just focus on staying safe, Light. Sarah would want that for you. She just... Loves you so much. After thanking Ethan for everything, the call ends and I'm left in silence, feeling empty and lost. My head is filled with endless questions, but I know why I won't get any answers anytime soon. My heart ached for my sister. The life, for the life she could have had. What the memories we could have made. I need to clear my head and think straight again. I kept walking, trying to come down and breathe normally again, but my lungs were struggling. My heart is racing like crazy. I feel so overwhelmed, like everything's closing in on me. I can't handle this. I just... I just can't. What should I do? Try talking to Yale. Immediately scroll through my contact list to find his contact number. Without thinking too much, I press his number and dialed. Please answer. Please answer. The dial tone persisted for a while, but there was no answer at the other end. Eventually, the call was redirected to voicemail. I shoved my phone back into my pocket and let out a sigh of disappointment. Well, what did I expect? We haven't been that close lately. Stupid. None of this feels real. Big sister. Sarah is gone. <laughs> I'm going to lose my mind. I retreated back to the solace of my room, seeking refuge under the covers. Curled up in a ball, I stared blankly at the floor. Uh. The room was filled with the sounds of my own sniffling, an occasional hiccup. I'm so tired. Feeling overwhelmed by emotions, I curled up even tighter and allowed myself to cry even more. Thoughts of Sarah flipped my mind as I cried my eyes out, soon falling asleep just like that. I groggily reached for my phone, the screen illuminating the dark room. Checking the clock, it shows the next day. Nine. Holy frick. I can't believe I slept for so long. I slowly pulled myself out of bed, feeling a sense of heaviness weighing me down, and completely ignoring, like, the figure that's lurking behind the window. Everything feels so bleak. Sarah. The memories of yesterday's phone call flooded my mind once again. Still can't grasp the reality of it all. Is this even happening? Checking my phone, I saw there's a message from Ethan, Sarah's boyfriend. It reads, Sorry to bother you again, but we're organizing a proper funeral for her. You think you can make it, Lion? I put my phone down, biting my lip, my mind going fuzzy. It wasn't a dream. It's all true. Yeah, Sarah's really gone. I couldn't hold back the tears anymore. It's sinking in. Sarah, she's actually gone. What sick person would do this to Sarah? What did she ever do to deserve it? Talk about bad timing. I put my phone on the table and headed to the front door. When I open the door, the delivery person stands there, holding a package in their hand. Delivery for Yale! Sign here! Yale? What? I'm in a hurry. Apologize for the inconvenience. Please be quick. 
I raise an eyebrow in annoyance. Not this again. Once in a while, a delivery meant for Yale ends up in my place. Wait, hold on a second. I do have the wrong address again. It's my place, not Yale's. Yeah, yeah, I heard that before. Just take it. The courier drops a package in front of the doorstep and quickly dashed away. Wait, what the? Let out a loud sigh and look down at the package. Seriously, this keeps happening. I'll have to bring it to Yale. I didn't even bother changing it to something decent. I head upstairs to Yale's apartment, holding the package. Yale, the package ended up in my place again. What? He called out his name and knocked on the door, but no response. Hello? Yale? You home? I knocked again, but still nothing. Yale? Weird. Is he not home or something? To my surprise, the doorknob turned easily. I realized the door had been unlocked all this time. Try and step inside. Just knock on the door again. I knocked on the door again, this time more forcefully to create a louder sound. Gale! You home! The package ended up in my place again, so why don't you open the door for me? The door's unlocked, by the way. I'm forgetful of you. Is it okay if I step inside? Still silence. I really don't want to just enter his place like this without his permission. Feels like I'm breaching his privacy, but I feel like I have to do this. The apartment is dark and quiet. I smell a faint scent of burnt toast in the air. Are you having a strong? I approach his bedroom door. Knock on it. Sorry for stepping inside without permission. You forgot to lock the door. Anyway, I'll just go ahead and put your package here, then leave, okay? Still no response. Is he okay? Maybe I should try come inside. Get. Yeah. Hi, Yale! Never even seen you! God! You could have been a proper, like, love interest. What the frick? What the hell? I suppress the urge to vomit. Uh, uh, try to help him. The stench of blood and decay was overpowering. And you get the smell out of my nostrils. I want to leave. I'm scared. But then, I heard Gale's weak moans. I knew I couldn't leave him to die alone. I had to help him. At least I had to try. I forced myself to take a deep breath, then another as I carefully approached Yale's bloodied body. The sight of his gaping wound made me want to scream, but I gripped my teeth and focused on finding his pulse. Gale, hang in there, please! The voice is barely audible above his rasping breaths. He looked up at me, his eyes wide and pleading. Gale's breathing grew more labored, and I could see the fear in his eyes. Oh my god, who did this to him? <coughs> Gale coughed and sputtered, blood bubbling from his mouth. Don't talk just yet, please, just keep breathing. I fumbled for my phone, trying to dial the emergency number with shaking fingers. Hello, 818? There's a man here with me. He, he was like this when I found him. I'm, I'm his friend. Yeah, we're apartment at uh, the road number. As I waited for the ambulance to arrive, I tried to keep Yale conscious, talking to him and holding his hand. Yale's eyes soon drifted shut, and his grip on my hand loosened. I panicked. DK was slipping away, but then he gasped for breath again. The, when the ambulance finally arrived, I felt a surge of relief wash over me, knowing that Yale would have a chance to live. As they wheeled him away, I couldn't shake the feeling of horror that clung to me like a second skin. Something doesn't feel right. Okay, so the fruits are all packed. What else am I forgetting? It's been a whole week since that incident. Yale is still recovering from the attack. He underwent a surgery to address his neck wound, and now he has finally transitioned to the regular hospitalization room. We still haven't reported the incident to the authorities, but I'm planning to do so soon. Due to his critical condition, we haven't been able to have any conversations until now. No visitors were allowed. But finally today, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to visit him and have a conversation. It's for the attacker who's responsible for all this. I wonder if it's the same culprit who murdered my sister too. Hello, I'm here to register a visit for a patient in room 432. Sure, please, sign your name here. Quickly signed the paper, I slid the paper back to the nurse's direction. Thank you. You can go and see him now. 
The patient's currently not receiving any visitors. Thanks a lot. Turning around, I made my way to the upper floor where Yale is being hospitalized. I gently knocked on the door to let Yale know that I arrived before entering the room. Ah, you're here, Lion. Thank you for taking time to visit me today. Well, how can I just leave you alone after going through a surgery like that? I sat down on the empty chair placed beside Yale's bed. Yale looked at me in silence for a moment before a tender smile formed on his face. Wow, oh, feels like ages since we had the last proper conversation, right? I nodded, acknowledging the truth in his words. It's true, it's been a while since we had any meaningful talk. Yeah, I've been caught up in some things, but I'm getting back on track now. Is that so? It's great to hear. You've been venturing out more often too, right? Yeah, I am. So it's mostly for work. At least you try to step out and enjoy life more. I'm sure you're doing your best, Lion. I heard a small, appreciative smile in response. Thanks, Yael. It's just unfortunate we have to meet under these circumstances. But I owe you my gratitude, Lion. I wouldn't be here if you hadn't come to my place that day. By the way, what were you doing there? I can't seem to remember much. I was actually trying to deliver a package that was mistakenly sent to my place. I see. Seems like another mix-up by the courier. I apologize, Lion. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. No need to apologize, Yale. Uh, I'm actually glad I had a chance to see you that day and help you out. By the way, when do you think you'll leave the hospital? Probably not anytime soon. I still need help with breathing and swallowing's a bit of a challenge at the moment. It sounds really tough. Hope you recover soon. Don't worry, Lion. Uh, the surgery went well and the doctor and nurses say I'm making good progress too. Once my blood levels stabilize and I'm able to manage the wounds with medication, do you mind consider discharging me? Yeah, that would be pretty gnarly. Surprisingly, it's not as bad as it looks. I can still talk, at least. Thank goodness for that. I wasn't sure what kind of weapon was used, but the wound is definitely severe. I couldn't see it properly during the attack either. Speaking of which, when should we report this to the police to sell the evidence? Yeah, dude, the crime scene is untouched, and there might even still be a bit of my blood that's still on the floor. Ah, <sighs> it's gonna smell awful. Hey now, don't be too hard on me. I haven't been able to go back home since the attack, so cleaning up had to take a rain check. I'm really curious about the attacker. Who could it be and what could their motive be? I still can't wrap my head around it. The attack? Yeah, why would they attack me? Why would they target me? It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, especially considering I didn't go down your route. I've never been involved in anything dangerous. I think the motive should be personal. He paused, deep in thought. That I don't know of. Could it be someone from my past? Say, one of my high school bullies? That's a possibility, but Sarah's recent murder comes to mind. Could her death be connected to Yale's attack? The more I think about it, the more I'm convinced that it was definitely an attempted murder, especially considering how serious his injuries are. The thought of losing Yale as well sent a chill down my spine. If I hadn't delivered that package to his place, he might not have made it. I'm sorry, Lion. I know this is a sensitive topic for you. I'll stop if it makes you com uncomfortable. I was just rambling to myself, trying to figure out who could be behind the attack. Let's change the subject, shall we? You look a bit pale. Yale's voice was laced with concern. Nah, it's okay, Yale. I was actually thinking about the same thing. Seeing the severity of your attack made me wonder if the same person is responsible for my sister's death. What? Sarah, my older sister. She's gone, Yale. I still can't believe it myself. It happened not too long ago. Uh, oh my god. A heavy silence falls between us as Yale waits for the next words. That's why I think the murderer could be the same person. That's horrifying, Lion. I'm at a loss for words, but please accept my deepest condolences. I've been dealing with all this alone. Oh my. She reached out to me. It's incredibly difficult to go through this alone. I can't even imagine what you've been going through. I know we haven't talked in a while, but I hope that we can change that from now on. Let me be there for you, okay, Lion? I did try calling him back then. I actually did call you, but you didn't answer. Oh, I'm sorry, Lion. It must have happened at the worst possible time. Yale looked almost shameful as he spoke. My phone got hacked recently. Couldn't receive any calls or met. Huh? Well, okay, okay. They're starting to stray away from the veil of possibilities, because here's the thing. I can understand client hacking into my phone, considering, like, he was already installed in there. He was a keylogger. He asked us to change our passwords while he was still installed in our phone. But for a client to infect 
like Yale's phone. It really doesn't make any sense unless, of course, like, unless, of course, Yale is also using Klein. I don't freaking know. Eh. Wait, your phone got hacked? Yeah, I was like that for a while, even before the attack happened. So I decided to leave my phone at home and keep it turned off because I thought if someone's really hacking my phone for whatever vile reason they may have, I'd rather not give him, you know, any more opportunities. What? Yale is right. Should have done the same thing. Lion, please don't tell me your phone was hacked as well. Yeah. What's even more unsettling is that all this feels like it's more than just a coincidence. I can't shake the feeling that someone's behind all this, pulling the strings. Can you describe more about the attack, if you don't mind talking about it? That's yeah, alright, Lion. When I entered my apartment at night, someone came at me from behind and targeted my neck. I instinctively tried to fight back and protect myself. I struggled and managed to turn around, but the attack on my neck left me disoriented. I wish I could provide any more details, but it all happened so fast and it was dark. Would have been more helpful if I could at least get a good look at the attacker's appearance. Don't blame yourself, Yale. You did your best in a dangerous situation. I appreciate that. It's just frustrating not being able to identify the person responsible. I only managed to catch a glimpse of his face. I think it was a man. A bit tall. A man? Huh. Lion, if you don't mind me asking, did the authorities give you information on your sister's murderous speculated agenda? No, not that I remember. I see. But if the attacker is also a man, they could potentially be the same person who took his sister's life. The thought of that honestly makes my blood boil. I'm determined to find a culprit. I'm gonna take matters into my own hands. What? I mean it. Just look at my sister's case. The police stopped investigating without a second thought. So simply consider her life insignificant. I feel foolish for ever thinking they will bring justice. To this day, there are still no answers. So unfair. The killer is still on the loose. Do they not care at all? So pissed. Ian. Yale reached out, placing his hand on my shoulder in a reassuring manner. Can you at least let me help you? I don't want anything bad to happen to you. I don't want you to become the next victim, Lion. Please, don't be so reckless. I know how angry you must feel right now, but please, don't do this. He's right. I shouldn't act carelessly. It's my problem, Yale. How can I let you... No, no, Lion, I'm your friend. Your problem is my problem too. So please, let me help you. The man attacked me too, so I'm clearly involved in this. Right. I couldn't find the words to refuse or deny his offer any longer. My attention was drawn to the sound of my phone buzzing incessantly. Is that your phone? Yeah, it's mine. Ah, <sighs> could it be my boss again assigning more work? I reached for my phone to check the notifications. As soon as I checked where the notifications came from, my body froze in shock. What the? Why am I still getting notifications from Klein? I uninstalled it already. It's wrong, Lion. It don't look so good. Curiosity got the better of me, so I decided to tap on the notification and test it out. To my surprise, the app opened, despite having uninstalled it. It's this virtual boyfriend app. I uninstalled it a while back, yet it still opens. That sounds incredibly odd. I leaned in to take a closer look at a man displayed on my phone screen, and his expression turned stern. I swear I uninstalled this app a while back. Why is it still here? Is this some kind of joke? No, I can't even exit the app. It's completely frozen. No, wait, Lion. What is it, Yale? There's something about this virtual boyfriend's appearance. It's strangely familiar. Like the man who attacked me. The blue streaks in his hair. I remember seeing them during the incident. Lion, could there be a connection between the virtual character and the real life assailant? And for now. Anyway, that was Klein version 0.1. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys want to play this game for yourself, link to the game will be in the description below. I might be back for like part two of this once the full game has been released. But in the meantime, hey, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion signing off. Ciao.